Hey y'all, welcome to today's fishing trip. I recently discovered that the Parks and Wildlife stocks small lakes and ponds all over the state with trout during like December, January, and February. And I came out to this one particular lake here, a little, I say lake, it's a little pond. I came out here about oh, a few days ago in the evening for about an hour and caught about, I don't know, 15 or so. And uh, I thought, well, shoot, I'm gonna bring my cooler back. I, I wasn't prepared. So I didn't bring a cooler to keep any and I've never eaten one of them. And I, and so if anybody knows a good recipe, I'd, I'd appreciate you leave it down in the comments or, or, a li or something, just, just tell me something because I, I've never eaten one before. I, I guess you're just gonna fry them like you do other fish or something, I'm not sure, or bake it. So I got in a little ultralight rod and I got a lot of little crappie baits. I don't really have a lot of trout fishing baits. Um, I've got some little spinners. I got some little hair jigs and stuff. Um, and I'm going to see if I can't catch my limit, which is five and there's no size limit. And, you, um, you can just keep five rainbow trout, any, any size, I guess per day. Um, some of these places, these, uh, little lakes are free. This one here actually costs $5 to get in. If you want to get, introduce your kids into fishing, this is the time to do it because these little lakes, they stock, uh, Shoot, I, I've seen from 500 to 3,000 in various lakes. And man, them little dudes are hungry too. And from what I can tell from just the little bit that I've done it, corn, whole corn, kernel corn works very well. So you can bring your kids out here with a little bobber and a little little can of corn and man, they can just have a blast. They don't really have to um, do like me and throw a little spinner, spinner or, or jig or anything like that. So... Anyway, I'm fixing to get to it, and uh, hopefully, I'm going to catch some to take home. All right, y'all. I'm going to try to catch a few, and if I can figure out what they're biting on, I'll show you what I'm using here in a little bit. Uh-oh. I think you got to open this first. First cast. Oh, I got one first cast. There you go. He got loose. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Dang it. That was exciting. Oh, darn it. He got loose. So, shoot. Look at that. One blew up out there. Busted the water out there. Not sure just how fast I need to be retrieving or anything just yet. I would imagine that little pond's cold. The water's probably cold. It was 39 degrees this morning and it's only it's in the 40s still right now, so. There's one right there. Look at that. That was what my third cast? Third or fourth. He's not very big. But we'll take him to get started. Look at that. Beautiful. Aren't they beautiful fish? Oh shoot, be still. Slick little dudes. There it goes. One thing I recommend doing, if you use any kind of little spinners or something and you, you're going to uh, just catch and release, or like me, I'm not gonna keep anything unless it's a pretty good size. I recommend you mashing the barbs down on your hooks because uh, these fish are pretty fragile from what I can tell. And no sense in being any harder on them, you know, than you have to be if you're gonna release them for somebody else to catch. Let's see if we can do that again. I'm not sure what sizes they put in here. 
in these places. The first time I came here, which was just a few days ago, um, I caught one that was about 12 inches maybe. Uh, that may be a big one for all I know. But I'm going to try to catch five of them that are at least around 10 or more that I take home. Seems like there's more activity over on that other side over there. More busting the surface. I got one. Another little guy looks like, but it sure is strong. And I tell you what, they really hit this thing hard, man. Oh shoot, he got off. That's what's good about them. Look at him. That's what's good about them barbless hooks on here. <laughs> He can get free too. So, on that last one, what I had done is I just kind of started pumping this little bait instead of just a steady retrieve. Let's see if that works a little better. Make it more erratic. They sure are jumping over on that other side. I don't know if they know I'm here or what, but there is definitely more activity on the other side of this pond. Oh, there's one. He's a jumper. I get bigger than that. Oh, it's a slick rascal, that's for sure. Come on, be still. They ain't gonna be still, that's for sure. They're like grabbing a big shad or something. I don't know, that may be worth keeping. I think I will, just to get it started. It's not very big, but I don't know what I'm gonna get as far as big ones. So we'll start him out. Uh oh, uh oh, oh, he's trying to get loose. He's trying to get loose. He's trying to get loose. He's gonna get loose. Golly, slick. You don't wanna go in that cooler. That has got some pretty colors on him. Look at that. I had a hook just come right out with that without any barbs on it. And somebody else can catch him. And what I have here, this is a uh I think it's a 16th ounce rooster tail. It's got a little gold blade on it, a little black feather. And I've got it on six pound monofilament line. It's just a little um, five foot medium light. Or no, it's a light action, not medium. Five foot light action, a little 500 series reel. So, seems to be working pretty good. And you can catch so much more if you use corn or something like that. And I think they buy like little power, Berkeley power nibbles and things like that. When I was here the other day, the uh, people that had the corn, man, they caught way more than I did. But 
I like trying to catch them with lures, so. I'm gonna try that other side. It seems to be a little better. There's more activity over there. All right, let's try it over here. There it is, first cast over here. I knew I was seeing more activity on this side. Another little guy. See a piece of corn somebody used right there in the water. Ooh, that looks like a good one. There's one right there. Look at the color on his cheekbone. He just ran up there and snatched, swatted at that thing. There's another one. A bunch of little fellas. I mean, they're thick out there. It's amazing.
Uh oh, no. Thought he might be a keeper. He might be strong. And he ain't much bigger than them others. Well, y'all, I caught so many that I'm not even going to bore you with the, the footage on all the fish that I caught. Uh, but I finally got five good ones. Uh, they're what I considered good ones uh, to keep. So I'm fixing to try to head to the house and try to figure out how to cook those rascals. And like I said earlier, if you know any good recipes, uh, good flavorful ways to cook them, I'd sure appreciate any advice you can give me because I've never had any before. Uh, I've had, you know, crappies and catfish and all that kind of stuff, but I've never had any rainbow trout. So uh, let me let me just show you real, real quick what I got. Um, this cooler is probably about it, about 10 inches. And as you can see in there, there's some pretty decent little fish. So I'd encourage you to get out. Uh, take those grandkids, take your kids, any, anybody you can. And get them out and enjoy this while you can. Like I said, it'll last. Uh, they'll stock again in February. Um, so... Look on the website, Texas Parks and Wildlife website. Try to find a location near you. And there's, they're all over the state. And uh, get you a can of corn or some power bait and some light line. Uh, even a little rooster tail or maps like this. A little small spinner, spinning rod, push button reel, cane pole. It don't matter. And uh, get out there and enjoy this while you can. I appreciate you joining me. I'll see you on the next one.